Hey guys welcome back to the channel. This is part 9 of what if Naruto was the Red X. If you guys enjoy this what if, and want to see part 10 of it, comment down below, and let me know. And go ahead and check out other what ifs in the channel. Before we start please do support for more awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like, and also share this video with your friends. So let's start this video. Later. Cyborg, Beast Boy, and Star all sat watching as the movie ended. Both Cyborg and Beast Boy had to admit that following Raven wasn't so bad thanks to the movie. However they then noticed Naruto and Raven getting up and all ducked down. Above them, the black clad figure narrowed his masked eyes on the two, while keeping his fingers pointed towards him. So what now Kar-chan? Naruto questioned, and the figure raised a brow at the nickname for the girl. Want to go talk at the cafe? Raven ventured and Naruto nodded his head. Your friends are still following us. The blonde then said and the black clad figure smirked, while Raven groaned in annoyance. I don't really care, I'll expose them later, for now they haven't been bugging me, so I'll leave them be. Raven said and the black clad figure turned his microphone off then crawled out of the vents to follow the two. Back in theater, as Raven and Naruto left Beast Boy, Cyborg and Star all followed after them, trying to be sneaky, but both Naruto and Raven noticed them. I swear Kar-chan. Your friends are the most annoying kids, I've ever had the displeasure of being followed by. Naruto grumbled, and Raven gave a slight smirk. What other kids have ever followed you? She quipped and Naruto smirked. It was the grandson of my village leader and his two friends. Naruto offered and Raven raised a brow before rolling her eyes. You? Naruto asked and Raven grimaced before slumping. I wasn't well like back home. She said simply and Naruto reached out and patted her on the shoulder. I know that feeling. Sucks huh? Naruto commented, and Raven nodded her head to the blonde in agreement. The two were in an amiable silence afterwards with Naruto trying not to turn his head to glare at Cyborg, Beast Boy, or Star, when he suddenly felt like someone else was watching him for some reason, Kar-chan, is it just me, or does it feel like we're being watched? Naruto questioned and Draven gave him a look. My friends are following us, remember? She stated and Naruto frowned. Not them, they don't put me on edge someone else is following us. Naruto stated and Draven frowned before feeling out and frowning. Two of them. She stated and Naruto frowned darkly. I kinda forgot to bring my surveillance stuff Kar-chan, got anything? Naruto questioned and Raven closed her eyes and frowned. One of them is non-hostile for certain, but I'm having trouble reading anything from the other one, I don't like this. Raven stated and Naruto nodded his head, before checking his jacket, and pulled a scroll from one of the pouches on the front. Okay, I've got a couple ninja tools with me, but that's about it. Naruto said before pushing the scroll back down into the pouch discreetly and Raven nodded. I've got my powers waiter attack now. Raven questioned and Naruto frowned to himself. The old him would have wanted to attack, but that would be foolish as they didn't know what the intentions of whomever was following them was. We wait. Let's see what cards our mysterious trackers have up their sleeves. Naruto said while still walking and Raven nodded as they then turned into the cafe and Naruto noted her friends were still following them. Not very good at stealth, are they? Naruto questioned and Raven gave him a dry look. We normally don't need to use deception and stealth like ninja do, Naruto. She stated and the blonde former nin shrugged his shoulders in response. The two then walked over to a table, Raven ordering her usual while Naruto got green tea, and both noted one of the unknown pursuers was stationed at a window near the roof, the other seemed to have vanished entirely. Their three known pursuers, Cyber, Beast Boy, and Star, were currently at another table and trying, but failing to hide behind a menu. So, anything on your mind Kar-chan? Naruto questioned and Raven nodded. I was actually wondering about that mask, those rings, and that cloak you had with you last night. She said with a curious tone and Naruto grinned in response. The mask and cloak belonged to a man named Yachiha Madara, Sasuke's ancestor from 80 years in the past if I'm not mistaken. Naruto said while rubbing his chin and Draven blinked. And he's still alive. The girl questioned and Naruto grimaced at that part. Well no not anymore. Naruto admitted and Draven noticed how odd he was acting seeing as he wasn't being witty or playful. Then what about the rings? Raven asked, she could tell he didn't want to talk about how this Madara guy was dead, though Raven had a few ideas. The rings are special in that they were once worn by the 10 most dangerous ninja where I'm from. The group was formerly known as the Red Dawn Organization, or simply the Akatsuki. Naruto explained before their tea was brought to them, and both he and Raven took a quick sip. So, you were a ninja before coming to Jump City, right? Raven questioned and Naruto nodded his head to her. What was it like? Raven asked and Naruto placed his tea down and cupped his chin in thought, wondering how to explain to her. Well, at first when I went through the academy, I always thought, if I was a ninja, no one would disrespect me, or belittle me anymore. Naruto admitted and Raven could guess why from his description of his past. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Naruto then said softly while leaning back and Raven blinked. How so? She asked and Naruto flinched while looking down. 
No matter what I did, no matter how strong I got, everyone always called me a weakling or loser. No matter how many times I saved someone with a brilliant idea, or when I learned something no one my age should, they would always just call me an idiot, a dober baka. Then, when I thought someone actually loved me well you know. Naruto sat while looking to the side and Raven tried to think of something to say, one of her emotions saying awkward, and she couldn't help but agree. I really shouldn't have asked he seems depressed now. She thought then was surprised when he let out a light chuckle. But, that's all history now, I have friends who like and trust me, and I think I'm starting to fall for a girl with eyes that are too cute. Naruto then sat with a smile and Raven blushed while seeming to shrink into her hoodie. My eyes aren't that special. She sat and Naruto leaned forward with another smile on his face. I've seen Jade, Amber, Ruby, Diamond, Sapphire, Onyx, and even Ivory colored eyes before Card Chan, but I like your rare amethyst eyes the most. He sat and saw the girl blush once more while fiddling with her mug. T thanks. She offered and Naruto raised a brow. Is it me, or does she channel Hinata when she's embarrassed? Naruto wondered to himself while Raven took a deep breath and then calmed herself down. Naruto, could you possibly tell me something about your past? Raven questioned and Naruto leaned back, taking a sip from his tea once more. Like? He asked and Raven noted the titans around the room and inwardly twitched and promised to send at least Cyborg and Star to a nightmare world. Beast Boy at least knew she could take care of herself and wasn't doubting her in any way. It was sad to realize he was the one who trusted her judgment the most. Well, could you tell me about your mother? Raven questioned and saw a look on Naruto's face, and she grimaced. I am sorry, I forgot about that. She offered and Naruto waved it off while leaning back. Nah, it's alright Kar-chan my mom. Naruto started then stopped to collect his thoughts, and gave a small true smile in remembrance. My mom, her name was Uzumaki Kashina, she was a beautiful woman with a kind heart. She. She always made me feel special, like I was the most important person in the world. Whenever I was with mom, she'd always say for me not to start fights, to make friends, so she wouldn't have to worry about me. I guess I still start fights, but I do make friends now. Naruto said then muse with a slight smile on his face, and Raven blinked several times. Wow, do you have a picture? Raven asked and Naruto nodded, reaching into a pocket he fished out his wallet then flipped it open to show his mom holding him in a hug, when he was still only 5. She really looks like Starfire, an older Starfire at least. Raven mused while well, Naruto then pulled his wallet back to have a final look at his mom before putting it back into his pocket. Well, what about your mom Kar-chan? Naruto asked and Raven flinched before looking down into her tea as old wounds started to surface. My mom, her name was Raleroth. She, she let some monks take care of me, because of my powers. I didn't get to see her often, she was always keeping away, so I wouldn't lose focus but. Raven explained and Naruto flinched, while mentally kicking himself. Sar Kar-chan. He offered and Raven gave a slight smile. It's alright, I know it's uncomfortable for you to talk about your mom as well. She offered and Naruto nodded her head and Raven suddenly had an idea. Let's leave our fathers out of this conversation entirely. She offered while mentally wishing her father would rot in hell, and Naruto remembered the Kyuubi so quickly agreed. How about we try something else we both liked? Raven offered and Naruto smirked. Books. He offered and Raven smiled for once, fully and Naruto grinned inwardly. She's much prettier when she smiles. He noted idly, while Raven asked if he had any good ones on Legends and the like. Naruto grinned at this and mentioned having a few on his land's Legends, as well as stories which Raven got into. Meanwhile Cyborg was listening intently as well as Naruto explained his past as a ninja. Dude really doesn't seem to be a villain if all he's talking about is books. Cyborg murmured to himself while Beast Boy was trying to listen in by pointing his ear towards where the two were and failing miserably. Dude, I can't hear anything. Beast Boy complained and Cyborg grimaced, while grasping an ear then glared at the little green dude with a frown. Why Beast Boy, I won't be able to listen in on them if you talk too much. Cyborg said in a harsh whisper and Beast Boy pouted while crossing his arms. Friend Beast Boy why is it you wish to listen to the conversation between friend Raven and her own friend? Starfire questioned and Beast Boy scratched the back of his head with a nervous grin on his face. Aya uh, never mind. Beast Boy said quickly and Cyborg smirked while Naruto was getting to the part of his story where he met with the androgynous boy Haku. Well I can say one thing, Raven's friend is thus far just that, Raven's friend. He likes books, has some emotional baggage with his past, and even seems to have a few hidden secrets like Ray. Hell the only difference between them besides blonde hair, and is that he can cut loose and enjoy life when he wants to. Cyborg said thoughtfully while rubbing his chin and Beast Boy got. Boring. Why can't Raven have any interesting friends, like maybe a cool super ninja or something like Red X? Beast Boy demanded then nearly shouted, but somehow managed to keep himself down, while Cyborg rolled his eyes. He idly wondered why Beast Boy's imagination was so overactive, but decided he didn't care. Above them at the window a familiar figure in black was also listening in, and couldn't help a smile upon realizing it looked like Raven had found a friend. 
However, he narrowed his eyes wondering what was going on with him when he saw a frown on the blonde's face before looking around. Something wrong, Naruto? Raven questioned and Naruto looked around the room with a frown on his face and a bad feeling in his gut. Someone's in the room, and whomever it is they're starting to annoy and creep me out. Naruto stated simply while looking around, and couldn't seem to spot anything out of the ordinary, at least ordinary with this world. That hard to ignore. Raven quipped and Naruto slowly nodded his head, while Raven concentrated then her eyes bolted open as a flash of a familiar half black and half copper mask seemed to flash before her vision for a single second. We need to go, now. She said lowly but with an urgent edge to her tone, and Naruto nodded his head, and both got up. Where? Naruto questioned and Raven looked all around before frowning. Can't tell, too many people around. She said simply and Naruto started to tilt his eyes all around the room for a while with a frown obvious on his face. Whatever it is I can't feel them out at all, not one of the ninja after me, but I can still tell that someone's following us. Naruto stated and Raven raised a brow for only a second, before deciding she didn't want to know how he felt people out of a large crowd. Whatever it is also doesn't have any form of aura I can trace, so unless we're dealing with a robot or a zombie, I don't know what it is. Raven stated while walking quickly beside of Naruto who nodded his head having fought zombies before at least though that was a story for another day. He's still following us isn't he? Naruto asked as they turned down an alley, and Raven nodded her head. Why hasn't he attacked yet? Naruto questioned and Raven frowned to herself. I don't know, and I really don't like it. None of our usual rogues are this patient nor are any of them this stealthy. Raven said and Naruto resisted the urge to laugh, as he knew just how true that was from living with just a couple of them. However he dismissed those thoughts as he and Raven then turned down another alley, and finally into an old construction site. Alright, we know you're following us so just come out already. Naruto called out, and Raven gave him a look. Gets him out faster than trying to find him, he knows we know he's around, so he'll either abandon stealth or just leave. Either way it gets rid of him or allows us to deal with him in a more proactive manner. Naruto explained and Raven blinked before nodding her head, then felt a cold shiver go up her spine, until she heard Beast Boy, Cyborg, and Star all fall out behind them. Dudes I didn't have anything to do with this, it was all their idea. Beast Boy called out while pointing to Cyborg and Star, Cyborg gaping while Starfire looked hurt. Us. You're the one who came out to spy on them. Cyborg shouted and would have continued, had Blackfields not covered all their mouths. Shut up, he didn't mean any of you. Raven said in a low monotone while looking around and saw a shadow leaning against one of the beams ahead of them, veiled completely in the shadows. Hmm, and to think I thought I could elude detection for a little while longer. Came a voice that made Raven's heart nearly stop, and her eyes widen while taking a step back in fear. The shadow then got up from leaning, and turned towards the group, his arms folded behind his back, while looking towards them with a single grey eye piercing through the darkness around him. Kar Chan you okay? Naruto questioned and Draven looked to see him looking towards the figure with a serious frown, and nary a hint of fear on his face. Ah, Titans, it's been quite some time and you have a new little friend with you as well. The cold monotonous voice called out while a figure walked out of the shadows and Draven's breath hitched in her throat, Starfire gasped, Cyber gawked. And Beast Boy surprisingly snarled in the direction of the man. The man looked to be around 6.5 feet at the very least, with an obvious muscular build, and a single cold grey eye visible. He wore an all-black suit of what looked like the same material used in the X suit, with a grey band around his waist and both his elbows, a grey bandolier around his upper torso, a grey utility belt around his waist made of pouches, rather than the plates the X suit and Robin use. His hands covered by grey gloves. Armor was placed onto his suit as well however, over each bicep, both forearms, eyes, knees, and shins, his shoulders were covered by the same form of apparatus as Starfire's only his had studs over it, with armor placed onto his boots, over his toes, heels and the soles of the thick combat boots. Last was his mask, a strange mask made from solid steel that was black on the right half, copper on the left half with a single eye hole, with a strange black mark around the eye that curled upwards at the side of his eye. Pads placed over each of his ears while black steel covered the back of his head and neck from view. Hello Titans, remember me? The man questioned in that same chilling monotone that made Naruto shiver with a combination of fear and anger. He knew that tone of voice from only one person after all. Who are you? Naruto questioned while taking a crouched stance, and the man looked at him as if disinterested for a few moments. I am Slade. The man, now known as Slade, said simply and Naruto shivered ever so slightly, he'd heard about this maniac, while he was in the hive from the Troika, he knew his type from his days as a ninja however. No way. You can't be Slade. He fell into a pit of molten lava. No one could have survived that. Cyborg called out and Naruto had to nod his head in agreement, he didn't know anyone thus far at least as he'd certainly never try. Poor Cyborg, still thinking in rudimentary two-dimensional ways I see. Slade commented and Cyborg slammed his fists together, the hollow rings he was wearing turning off to reveal the normal Cyborg, as he pointed his sonic cannon towards the man. 
The boy threw his disguise off at that and crouched down quickly. Starfire powered up a couple starbolts, and Raven began to gather obsidian energy at her fingertips. Let's just see if you can match up to the real Slade then. Teen Titans, go. Cyborg called out as he and the rest of the Titans lunged forward, Naruto muttering under his breath as he then lunged forward after them, holding his hat down as he did. Behind them all and still unseen the black clad figure jumped into the building as well. Cyborg was the first to attack, lashing out with a quick right hook towards Slade with his sonic cannon. The man easily dodged however, and then spun on his heel sending the titanium teen flying back into a beam. Still as rash as ever I see. Slade said coldly, before holding his gauntlets up as several starbolts came his way from Starfire. This should be amusing. He said coldly, while crouching down then jumped up, and grabbed Starfire by her throat, before slamming her into the ground. Azerath, Metrian, Zinthos. Raven called out while grabbing Slade then slamming the man into a beam, then another before throwing him into the ground. Remind me not to get on your bad side. Naruto said mostly to himself and Raven actually smirked, till Naruto pushed her to the ground, and ducked as an exploding disc nearly took their heads off. You shouldn't allow yourself to become too distracted my dear. Slade said coldly then grunted as Beast Boy in the form of an elephant rammed into him. The man narrowed his single eye, however and quickly flipped onto Beast Boy's back, then used a device, to shock the green teen, knocking him out cold, while Slade kicked off of his back, and into a stance on the ground. Alright, this fucker's all mine now. Naruto said, and before Raven could protest the blonde had already moved forward and jumped into a double kick to Slade's chest, sending him onto his back, while Naruto rolled into a crouch. Hm, perhaps you're not just a friend of Raven's after all. Slade mused and Naruto smirked despite himself. Alright candy corn face, catch me if you can. Naruto challenged before jumping up and then making his way up towards the top of the still under construction building. Slade narrowed his cold grey eye at this, before chuckling as he gave pursuit of the blonde, following him to the very top, where Naruto pulled his scroll out of his flak jacket, and then held it in both hands with them in a ram seal. What's this then? Slade questioned and Naruto grinned as he then threw the scroll open and placed a glowing hand onto it, a plume of smoke appearing as a grey utility belt appeared. His had four kunai cases on the front, two at the front of each hip, with five pouches beside and behind his hips all around the belt. Now that I've got a few weapons, let's start candy corn face. Naruto said while placing the belt around his waist, then pulling a kunai from it, and holding it before himself with a smirk on his lips. Slade merely met at the blonde's words before then reaching into his own utility belt, and producing a cylinder which then stretched to form into a staff. What is with you people and overly simplifying even the most basic of goddamned weapons? Naruto questioned slightly annoyed and heard a light chuckle from Slade in response. I believe you wanted to fight me just a second ago. Slade stated while crouching into a stance and Naruto quickly pulled a chain from one of his own pouches and attached it to his kunai, then pulled a second kunai out and attached it to the end of the chain and held it by the chain. Yeah, now let's see what you got. Naruto called out before jumping into the air and spinning the chain, then threw it at Slade who used his staff to catch it and pull the blonde down. Shinobi rule number 3, deception is key to even the easiest mission. Naruto thought with a smirk, inwardly thinking Aruka, as he then moved in the air to kick Slade in the face, then pulled on his own end of the chain, pulling Slade's upper torso forward, and making him slam into the ground face first while dropping his staff. I should have seen that coming. Slade grunted out before flipping to his feet, only to find Naruto swinging his kunai down at him, and blocked with one of his gauntlets. So you don't play to knock someone out him. Slade quipped and saw a nasty look cross over Naruto's face. I'm no killer if that's what you mean candy corn face. Naruto said with a deadly tone before kicking Slade in the chest, knocking him back long enough for the blonde to spin his chain once more, and then spin it into Slade's mask, knocking him to the side where he quickly righted himself. Come now boy, I see it in your eyes, you've stained your hands with blood more than once. Slade stated coldly and Naruto snarled before lunging at the man once more, jumping into a spinning roundhouse kick. Below. The titans were slowly getting back to their feet only to roll out of the way as several blasts came at them. Oh shit, it's the Slade drones. Cyber called out as several figures dropped to the ground below, and aimed strange weapons on them. Each of these things, had a black mask with a copper spot in the center and white reflective eyes. Their suits were full black, with a metallic collar around their necks, metallic gauntlets, and a metallic utility belt around each of their waists. They had metal shin guards with two metal rings around each of their biceps and thighs, and black boots with steel along the soles alone. Dude. Does this mean Slade really is back beast boy questioned while the Slade bots crept towards them from the darkness, dropping down from the many beams and Cyborg grit his teeth and aimed his sonic cannon. It doesn't matter if he is, or if he isn't, these things are a real threat at the moment. Cyborg called out, then lunged into the robots pulling his cannon back, then slammed it into the ground before the robots, scattering them back, while Raven frowned and looked upwards. Be safe Naruto. She whispered then formed her ebony energy around her hands. Azrath, Metrian, Zinthos. 
She called out while swiping her hands, forming an ebony blade and cutting through several of the drones. Meanwhile Starfire was tossing starbolts into the drones, when she saw a shadowed figure drop kick one then spin on his heel, and slam the back of his heel into another. Who are you? Starfire questioned and the person looked at her with a pair of narrow masked eyes. You know who I am. With that simple message, the person flipped back onto a robot, then slammed his foot into his head before seeming to vanish as the robot exploded. Leaving a very confused Starfire to wonder what had just happened and who that person was. However, she quickly returned to the battle at hand as the drones fired on her once more, frowning the alien princess's eyes began to glow as she let out a battle cry, and attacked the minions of Slade. Back with Naruto. Naruto panted while looking up from his spot towards Slade, the man had a cut or two in his suit, and his armor and mask had cracks forming. But the bastard just didn't seem to tire or wear out even a slight bit. Gritting his teeth in frustration, Naruto flipped back to his feet with his twin kunai wood chain in hand, and took a quick stance. Honestly boy, stop hiding that bloodlust, you have to hold back your own urge to just tear my head off, I can see it in your every move. Slade commented darkly, while looking down at the blonde who snarled, while clenching his fists tightly. Would you just shut the fucking hell up already? Naruto screamed before lunging at Slade once more with a roar, spinning into a roundhouse kick then slamming his fist into Slade's jaw. Banger, yes, you know to her age, but let's see just how far you can give into it. Slade commented darkly, and Naruto growled angrily once more before rushing forward, slamming his fist into Slade's mask only for the man, to flip him over his shoulder. You should learn to always watch for your enemies to exploit your weaknesses you know. Slade commented while turning to the boy and Naruto grit his teeth, before then quickly wrapping his kunai wood chain around his waist, then lunged at Slade. Throwing a fist at the man which Slade deftly dodged, then slammed a fist into the blonde boy's gut. Alright, no more Mr. Nice Ninja. Naruto said darkly, while pulling his hat off, and placed it into his belt. Simultaneously the blonde haired boy pulled out several explosive notes. That's it, show me what your true power is. Slade said darkly, while taking a stance and Naruto lunged at the man, slamming a fist into his face, while also deftly dodging the counter-strike. Maneuvering in and out of the man's attacks just by the skin of his teeth as he soon flipped back and away from Slade. Tiring out already. Slade commented and Naruto smirked before looking at his work, an explosive note on every piece of the man's armor. No. But I do have one last word. Naruto said while standing up and then retrieving his hat from his belt. Boom. But that Slade was pelted with several explosions over his armor before Naruto then jumped into a roundhouse kick and knocked Slade back and down to the ground 30 stories below. Tilting an ear to listen he actually smirked when he heard the man hit the ground with a loud crash. Ouch, bet he feels that in the morning. Naruto commented before then rushing back down to see how the titans were doing below. He instantly noticed the several dozen drones all over the place, with the titans starting to pick them down. However upon flipping to the ground he saw Slade was somehow slowly getting back to his feet and growled. Oh come on. Don't you ever just stay down. The blonde demanded before lunging forward, grabbing Slade by the front of his collar then slammed the back of the man's his head into a steel beam. Alright now buddy, I've had about enough of this shit as I can take, so just who the hell are you? Naruto demanded while reaching forward and pulling the front of Slade's mask off, the titans coming to see what was revealed as well. It's, a, a robot. Cyborg said with disbelief, while beyond Slade's mask was what looked like a robot with a TV screen inside its head. Geez, Giz would love this still pisses me off to no end though. Naruto mumbled under his breath, then took a step back as the screen in the robot's head crackled to life. Now on the screen was a shadowed figure with only her right eye exposed. Hello Titans, it's nice to finally meet the ones who murdered my father. The voice was young, it was feminine, and it was calm, cool, and collected basically it sounded like a young and somehow female Slade's voice to all those present. What the hell are you talking about, we've never killed anyone. Cyborg stated and the eye narrowed on screen. Oh? Weren't you the one who said he fell into a pit of lava not too long ago? The girl commented and Cyborg's eyes widened, while the other titans looked to the screen in shock. Ah, now you seem to get it. The girl commented and Naruto frowned. Why the hell did you send this bucket of bolts down here? He questioned with an edge to his tone and the girl on screen chuckled darkly. Quite simple really Mr. Uzumaki. I wanted to see if my father's files on the titans were still accurate, while also assessing the danger you yourself may pose to my future plans. The girl explained and the titans instantly knew that this was Slade's daughter alright. Got a name Slade. Cyborg mocked and the girl nodded her head. From now on titans, you may call me Ravager. Ravager seemed to give a bow, and Naruto couldn't help a slight shiver, as the name somehow made him think of Karen, what happened to her anyways. Well then Ravager, what the hell are you doing this for? Raven demanded and saw Ravager's single grey eye narrow on her angrily. You and your friends took my only family from me, I'll make sure all of you pay, and pay dearly for it. Ravager stated darkly and Naruto frowned. But, until next we meet titans, I leave you a little gift. With that a 020 appeared on the screen, and began to count down. I hate it when they do that. 
Naruto set before rushing out of the area, Cyborg and the others quickly following and jumping down as the slave bot in the construction site went off, causing the building to fall in on itself, while the five teens watched, I am so not paying for that. Naruto said and got looks from the titans before nodding their heads in agreement with him on not paying for the damages to the still only quarter finished building. Titan Sour, later. Raven and the other titans all made it back to the tower with Naruto there to say goodnight to his date. Raven and Naruto were up front at the moment, Raven's friends behind him as she walked up to the door, and then turned to face Naruto with an apologetic expression on her face. Sorry about the date going bad, I was actually having fun before that robot showed up to spoil it. Raven said while turning to the blonde, only to see a grin form on Naruto's face. Are you kidding me? Even with the freaky robot I had a blast, Card chan Naruto said with his arms crossed behind his head and Raven managed a tiny smile, before they then noticed Cyborg, Star, and Beast Boy were all still watching them. Seeing as the peanut gallery is still around I should probably head on home myself Card chan see you again for tea tomorrow though. Naruto said while giving a hug to Raven who blushed while attempting to reciprocate without embarrassing herself too much. Once that was done Naruto turned around, waved to Cyborg, Beast Boy and Star, then walked off seeming to vanish into the shadows surrounding the tower. How did he do that? Cyborg questioned while scratching his head and Beast Boy plainly gawked while thinking ninja. In his head for the millionth time. Seeing the two as they were, Raven couldn't help it as she smirked, it seemed he truly was a maverick showstopper after all. Raven, guys, where have you all been? It's nearly midnight, and we have to be ready for anything. Robin question then stated, after opening the door to the tower and Cyborg gave a long groaning sigh. Long story man real long I'll explain it all in the morning. He stated while walking into the building with Star and Beast Boy tagging along behind him with tired expressions on their faces. Robin merely blinked before looking to Raven who frowned slightly while crossing her arms. They followed me on my date for one thing or another. She stated with an annoyed tone and Robin frowned, while shaking his head. I'll get under cases about your privacy tomorrow Ray, head on to bed and get some sleep. Something tells me you've earned it. Robin then sat and Raven yawned, before walking into the tower herself and heading for the elevator, while Robin let out a relieved breath, and picked up a briefcase beside the door. The briefcase looked simple enough, being silver with Robin's symbol placed on top of it. The boy wondered then walked up the steps and soon reached the level of the tower where his room was located. Walking to his room the boy wonder entered and then walked over to have a seat and smirked as he opened up the case. Within was a pair of black gloves with metal plates at the back of each fist, gunmetal grey wrist protecting forearm guards located at the back of the case side by side, a pair of black boots with steel soles, and toes like his normal ones, a domino mask in a more V-like shape, a grey utility belt like slates, but with a strange buckle at the front, that looked like an energy core of some form, and finally a solid black suit made of the same material as Red X suit, but with a blue firebird symbol on the front. Sorry to invade your privacy and your love life Ray, but I can't let my team be endangered by anything. But now at least I know to at least give you some more space with Naruto. Robin mused then smirked as he looked at the suit within the case for a few more moments. And I've got to admit, the field test for my new Nightwing uniform went better than I ever expected. Robin said before he then closed the case. So what did you think of that boy Wintergreen? Ravager questioned of her butler, and the man rubbed his chin. As you said he is quite skilled Miss Rose, but I wonder if he could actually take over for your father, he seems quite loyal to his friends. Wintergreen wondered, and Ravager merely waved a hand at that with a frown on her face. Perhaps but what of the titans? Have they changed since last you saw them? Ravager mused then questioned and Wintergreen shook his head. Hm, then perhaps I don't need to focus on the titans. This Uzumaki boy intrigues me to no end. His skills, his apparent powers, and his knowledge all combine to make him something akin to a force of nature. Ravager mused while slowly walking over to the back of the room, Wintergreen at her side. The two walked over to a table bathed in light, on the table lay none other than Blackfire strapped down, her breathing steady and calm, as she seemed almost asleep. Have you kept her properly drugged Wintergreen? We don't need her waking up yet after all. Ravager questioned and her butler gave a simple stiff nod before replying. We are lucky she revealed some of her faults when she fought with Starfire and Red X Miss Rose, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to take precautions to ensure her health during her stay with us. Wintergreen said and Ravager nodded her own head in agreement, thankful for the man's quick thinking. Reaching down Ravager then pulled the gem from the color black fire war and chuckled lightly. To think this simple thing is what stores all her power. She mused looking at the gem before then tucking it into the girl's belt, she wouldn't steal it from her, though it seemed intriguing it would hamper her future plans to have her or Red X come and try and take it back from her. Do you have the modified version ready yet Wintergreen? Ravager then questioned and the butler nodded his head once more while pulling a similar jewel, only red as blood from his pocket, and handing it to her. This version shall overload her Miss Rose, she will go on a rampage, as soon as she awakens. Destroying anyone, and anything that stands in her way. Add on to that that this new version will also at least triple her combat abilities and she should be more than a match for Red X even at his best. 
Wintergreen said simply while Ravager smirked, then placed the jewel onto the collar-like device in place of the old one and saw Blackfire grimace in her sleep. She'll be a regular Black Inferno then. Ravager quipped with a light chuckle while Wintergreen nodded his head. Shall I have her place to attack those Hive Children's HQ then Miss Rose? Wintergreen questioned and Ravager chuckled while looking down at the girl as a smirk made its way to her pale lips. No we'll wait until the Titans are gone, then we'll have her attack the city to lure out the fox to see if he's as dangerous as he seems, after all Wintergreen, pawns are more useful to see what your enemy will do next, not to attack with directly. Ravager stated while looking at Blackfire with a dark glint in her dark grey gaze. Hive HQ. It has been a couple weeks after Naruto's first date with Raven. The two had been on a couple more, thankfully without the spies, and Naruto and Raven were able to share a little more with one another. Currently they've been on about 4 dates in the past few weeks, with them sometimes bumping into one another at the bookstore. Once the Hive gang found out Mammoth and Gizmo tried to squeeze him it was out of him. He also seemed to find Jinx more annoyed than she normally was around the base, usually saying something about oblivious blondes. At the moment however, Naruto was asleep, dreaming dreams as he normally does, mostly of him kicking the Kanohan in's asses. However when the first few beams of sunlight filtered through his window shades and into his eyes, the blonde ex shinobi groaned. Naruto rolled out of bed once more and groaned as he sat up, mumbling about not being a morning person for what felt like the millionth time. Cracking his neck Naruto then performed his morning rituals, and then walked out of his room with one eye open, and more than half asleep. However when a shadow then formed out of the floor and turned into Raven, his eyes shot straight open and he looked around, before quickly pulling her into his room. What are you doing here Kart chan have you forgotten my friends are your enemies? Naruto questioned lowly, and Raven rolled her eyes towards the worried blonde. 1. I can take care of myself. 2. I needed your help, and guess the hive don't wake up this early. Raven stated and Naruto blinked, before scratching his head. Actually Kart chan they wake up earlier than me. Naruto said and Raven was slightly surprised by this. Oh, well anyways I need you to do me a tiny favor. Raven said and Naruto gave her a look, Raven didn't ask for tiny favors as far as he knew, no, the only kind of favors she asked for were the ones that could get a person mauled. What? He asked suspiciously and Raven breathed out a sigh. Me and the others are heading out into the ocean, I told Robin that I'd try and find someone to watch the tower. I may have mentioned that you have ninja contacts who could do the job for us. Raven explained and Naruto frowned towards his girlfriend of three weeks with a look. You want me, a known thief, to watch the city? He asked and Raven nodded her head, then pulled her head down and gave him a look. Her eyes somehow seemed even brighter as she did, and Naruto tried to block the look with his arms. Ah shit, Kar chan You and those damn eyes. He said while Raven smirked towards the blonde who hung his head and gave her an amused glare. You're going to be the death of me Kar chan I swear. He stated while shaking his head, and Raven chuckled. Really? I thought the great prince of thieves wasn't afraid of death. She quipped and then found Naruto pulling her close to him, her face turning crimson as he did so, and then leaned down to smile at her. Now did I say it was going to be a bad way to die? He quipped with a smirk, and Raven lightly swatted him on the arm, making him chuckle. So what's got you kids heading off to see? Naruto questioned and Raven looked around before sighing. Brother Blood is trying to build another hive school. Only this one is being put underwater for some reason. We're going out there to take him down or so Robin says. Raven explains and sees a frown form on Naruto's face, which then splits into a white wicked grin. Please beat the hell out of him for me Kar chan I really don't like that bastard. Also he, had a window into the girls locker room in the old school. Naruto said then mused and saw Raven twitch before frowning. I make sure he feels the full fury of myself, and every female who he spied on. She said and Naruto chuckled before being surprised, yet not at all annoyed, when Raven reached up to hug him around the neck. Also thank you, Naruto. She said and then gave him a chase kiss on the cheek before vanishing into the shadows. My girlfriend is as shy as I am now going, I guess opposites really do attract. Naruto said while shaking his head and giving a chuckle. Oh well, might as well go and get some chow, before I head out, wonder if the ex suit is finished. Naruto said then wondered aloud as he walked out of his room and down the halls, until he walked into Gizmo's workshop. Hey Giz. He said and the tiny terror jumped out of his seat, then turned to the blonde with a snow. Stop that. He shouted and Naruto rolled his eyes. Is the exit ready? He asked and Gizmo blinked before grinning and nodding his head enthusiastically, pulling a briefcase from under his desk, he sat it down and opened it to reveal the helmet. It's ready alright, I went with a full on overhaul and took the suit as far as I could. Gizmo said while well, Naruto picked up the helmet and noted that it was made from a strange material now, with the skull more or less the same at least. I renovated the helmet big time, I took out a lot of crap, and then redesigned it to have most of the old features, while making them all smaller. Gizmo said proudly while well, Naruto messed with the helmet, trying to get a feel for where everything was on it. What about the rest of the suit? Naruto questioned while putting the battery back into the helmet, and then fingering the helm for a bit, finding buttons on a few points of the helmet, one at the lower jaw, one at each ear, one at each temple. 
The suit is now made of a special lightweight bulletproof and fireproof material, while being insulated for electrical shocks, and of course, it protects against rain and other waters from getting into it as well. It also has a special coating that dampens body heat, so you're practically invisible when you're using stealth mode. However anyone with sonar tracking will still be able to find you, I think the Tin Head Titan has this kind of rig up in his sonic cannon. Ismo explained while Naruto nodded his head silently, still looking over the helmet as he then pressed down on the buttons at the ears, and with a popping sound, he then moved the skull up to the top of the head. Inside he saw there was a mask over where his lower face would be that had a strange design to it. The helmet now has inferred, ultraviolet, and scope settings, but they only work with the skull brought down, it functions as a visor, even though I've updated it. The mouthpiece holds a synthesizer for your voice, and a rebreather just in case you ever fall into an ocean or something and need to hide. It also protects most poison gases, including Smilex Incus, you ever run into that clown freak the Joker. Ismo explained while Naruto nodded his head and noticed that the skull of the mask looks somewhat robotic now. Also check these out. Gizmo then said while pulling out what looked like his old gauntlets. However, after reluctantly putting the helmet down, upon further inspection, Naruto saw that these gauntlets had three scallops on the sides in a similar fashion to the legendary Batman. Only they were attracted into the gauntlets themselves. The gauntlets were mostly black, with the ash gray trim, the plate for the back of his hand, having a jagged red axe on it, while a groove ran the length of the back of the forearm plate, a thick gray bangle was around the wrist. And then another was placed at mid-forearm, both having a section at the back cut off. You really need to stop playing that cyber ninja game giz, you're getting them on the brain. Naruto said while looking over the gauntlets with a critical eye. Pulling it on he then found a button, and the scallops came from the sides of the gauntlets. Okay, why do I have Batman's things on my gauntlets? He questioned with a raised brow, and Gizmo snorted. Those scallops are razor sharp temp, they can cut through solid steel and deflect bullets easily. I figured you'd want something that has both defensive and offensive capabilities. Plus those would be handy if you completely drain the suit of chakra and need a weapon to fight with. Gizmo quipped and Naruto nodded his head before finding the way to retract the scallops, and watch them fold down. The godless also have the same electrical knuckle function as before for fist fighting. Ismo then added and Naruto nodded before placing the gauntlet down onto the ground, as the tiny terror picked up one of the two greaves, and put it onto the table. This new version were basically exactly like the old ones. These were black and reached up to cover the knee with a single plate, that covered the front of his shins like before. While they had thick black straps curving around the front of the armor then wrapping around the back, where another section of the armor, was located for maximum protection, around them for holding them on now, a plate looked to also be for the top of the foot with the straps coming down from it, a jagged red axe placed on that plate with straps coming down to curve around his feet. These like the old greaves, have the same electric function, primarily however they are just armor. I did however add protection up to your knees this time in case someone tried to blow your legs out from under you. They also have a special stabilizer and bracer systems in place with the gauntlets, to help you land from high places without breaking your legs in the process. Gizmo explained and Naruto actually whistled, he had to admit he was more and more impressed with Gizmo's work. Last we have the new belt. Gizmo said as he grinned and pulled the set object out, which like the last two items, looked almost exactly like the old one. This belt was ash grey, with a circular grey buckle with a tiny red axe in the middle of a black field, four prongs extended from the buckle, and latched onto the individual plates that made up the belt, a strange plate was on one side however. It has an upward slot with a panel showing several switches. Nice, the belt looks the same as well. Naruto said with a grin, and Gizmo gave him a glare for the crack. Gizmo then reached into the belt and pulled out several straps, two coming out of the two, two from the bottom, and looked at Naruto with a smirk, seeing his confused expression. I remembered when you said it was annoying how Robin just pulled your belt off of the original suit. These were added to prevent such an occurrence from ever being repeated. They go around your hips and thighs like a military belt has, hell that's where I got the idea. Ismo said then admitted with a frown and Naruto blinked then rubbed the back of his neck. Err? Thanks Giz that'll really help. He said and Gizmo then pulled out his shoulder guards, which also looked the same as they had before. They were designed to have straps curve around his shoulders and under his arms. The armor itself was made from a thick black flexible material that offered some extra protection. The guards themselves were black with a dark grey trim. Extra pads curving down from under them over his upper arms, where they had a pair of straps for going around his biceps. These truly are no different than the old armor, just added some nano circuitry into them, so they'll repair themselves like the rest of the armor does when you wear it, I have got to figure out how you do that at some point. Gizmo explained then added, and Naruto shrugged his shoulders before placing all of the gear into the case, and picking it up. Would you need the suit anyways? Gizmo then asked and Naruto smirked. I just wanted to head through town in style after I get something to eat of course. And with that Naruto left a confused Gizmo in his wake as he then set off for the kitchen and some food. 
Upon entering the kitchen he found Jinx sulking and looking into a glass of orange juice with a small frown and a sad look before sighing. Okay, what's wrong? Naruto asked seeing the girl who looked up then looked away from him. Nothing. She offered weakly and Naruto rolled his eyes, then walked over to sit in front of her, placing the case with the new ex suit down. New hit. You've been moody for the past two weeks and snapping at everyone Jinx. What the hell is wrong? Naruto said then questioned and Jinx merely looked down, and anywhere but at him. Looking back five minutes later she saw he still hadn't left and glared at him. I can wait here all day Jinx. He stated and the pink haired girl frowned, before letting out a sigh. Alright, I like this guy. She started and Naruto held up a hand, then walked over to the fridge and got himself something to munch on. Sitting back down he motioned for her to continue, and she gave him a slightly amused smirk. Alright, I like this guy, he's really smart, but positively clueless, no matter how many signals I send him. He also recently started dating this girl, I don't even know who she is, and I already don't like her. So now I'm trying to think of what I should do. Jinx offered and Naruto hummed in thought while leaning back in his seat. Does he love her? He asked and Jinx bit her lip before answering. I don't really know, they've only been going out a couple weeks, but he says they have a lot in common. Jinx explained vaguely and Naruto rubbed his chin while taking another bite out of his apple. Thinking for a few seconds then swallowing Naruto finally answered her. I got nothing. He said with a smirk and Jinx nearly burst into laughter and tears at the same time. She also had to wonder why he was so dense, alright, seeing as I'm not good with girls. Naruto started and Jinx held back a sarcastic comment. I'd say meet this chick he's dating and talk with her and try and work something or another out. According to my old sensei Jiraiya, you girls are better at helping each other than we guys ever were. Naruto said then frowned slightly as he realized what he had just said. Wait. My old sensei was a pervert who wrote smut for a living what would he know? Naruto said mostly to himself and Jinx blinked, then gaped at the blonde boy. Your sensei was a perverted old ninja. Who wrote smut for a living? She demanded loudly and Naruto nodded as causing the girl to snicker, then start laughing hysterically. Oh dear god, why didn't you tell me before? A ninja who writes smut for a living, that's priceless. She asked then exclaimed, while trying to keep from laughing too hard, and Naruto grinned sheepishly. Well, because he kinda forced me to write a perverted novel, while he was training me for one. Naruto mused and Jinx stopped laughing, and looked at him strangely before a grin spread over her face. This I have got to see. She stated enthusiastically, probably expecting it to be really, really bad, and Naruto rolled his eyes. Written in Japanese, remember? He stated and Jinx smirked before speaking in Japanese, and he blinked. Why didn't you tell me you spoke Japanese? He asked and the girl shrugged her shoulders before grinning. I can also read and write in Japanese too. Cheshire taught me, and to answer your question with one of my own, why didn't you tell me your sensei was a luck? She offered back, and Naruto gave her a look. Because most girls would instantly assume I'm a pervert besides that, so was brother blood, he had a fucking window to the girl's locker room for Kami's sake. The blonde said and Jinx stopped grinning, only to snarl and clench her fist tightly. I'm going to kill that man, when I see him again. She called out angrily, and Naruto rolled his eyes, finishing his apple he then headed off to his room. Hey, wait up. I need to see this triad smut you wrote. She said with a grin and Naruto grunted, having hoped she forget he ever mentioned that now he was going to have to find that damn book Jiraiya forced him to write all that time ago. Miss Rose, Mr. Blood has drawn the attention of the Titans as per your request. Wintergreen informed while looking to the back of a large throne. Sitting in the throne is Ravager who then opened her single eye and smirked with one elbow on an armrest and her fist in one cheek. Then did, Raven go to him as we suspected she would. She questioned and Wintergreen nodded his head, while standing behind her. It seems he is going out as Red X rather than Tempest this time madam. At least from what our surveillance drones were able to glean when he exited the building as Red X. Are you sure you don't wish to wait for a time when he will use his real skills over that suit and its functions? Wintergreen questioned and Ravager briefly considered it, before shaking her head from side to side. No? We have seen that he tends only to use his full skills when he's behind a mask. Now will be the best time to see more of his power. Ravager said before typing rapidly on some buttons located on the armrests of her chair. As we saw last night he held back due to the titans being nearby and possibly exposing himself to them as Red X or Tempest, a thief in one case and a hive member in the other. Ravager said while replaying data from the fight last night, noting he'd only needed to use his bare fists and those explosive notes to defeat the robot, which had been made to be almost as skilled as her father was in real life. True madam. Forgive me but I merely thought it would be prudent to wait until we could learn of his full skills. Wintergreen said with a bow of his head and Ravager smirked towards the old man who had raised her for so long. Don't worry. We'll learn more about him soon enough Wintergreen. She said darkly, while she then typed on the armrests once more. Let's start a fire and drive the animals from their homes. She said mostly to herself, while Wintergreen nodded his head, as he understood what she meant. 
A flashing light illuminates a dark area. A pair of glowing red eyes open, as their owner roars out in fury and bursts out of her tomb. Blackfire growls angrily as her glowing red eyes glare out around her at the building she found herself in. The alien girl then suddenly grits her teeth for a second, bringing her hands to her head as pain consumes her mind. As she falls to her knees for a second her eyes glow dims, before she slams her hands into the ground her eyes now brighter than ever. Roaring out loudly the girl starts throwing dark bolts all over the building, blasting hole after hole out of it before looking towards the roof, and firing a power beam attack upwards. Grinning almost insanely then girl then flies up through the new hole she's made while scanning around the city. As she looked around one might have noticed the small receivers placed into her ears with a jagged black S on them. He's here left Blackfire. The one who attacked you is that way, the one who kept you from you vengeance. A voice said and Blackfire didn't care who it was as she growled and then flew off in the direction specified by it. Jump City Rooftops. Naruto rushed across the many roofs of Jump City, a grin on his face as he flipped in the air, and came down on top of a building with great ease. I hate being out in the middle of the day, but shit this test run is going great. Naruto said to himself as he'd been testing the bracer stabilizer system in his gauntlets, and grieves all this time. Now if only I had something to test the other new features on. Naruto then mused, before looking around and frowning when he saw smoke, and heard sirens in the distance. Ugh, Karchan you owe me big for this shit. Naruto said lowly then rushed over towards the edge of the building and leaped off, landing in a roll, before he rushed towards the smoke, and looked down with a frown seeing several cops behind a car firing stun weapons at a familiar alien girl. Blackfire. What the hell is she doing here? Naruto wondered then saw Blackfire lift a car and easily, before throwing it towards the cops, most of the ducking out of the way, when he saw Officer Connors down there. How does that old guy get himself into all of this trouble? Naruto wondered to himself, before flipping off the building, to land beside of Officer Connors, the brown-haired man aiming what looked like an M4 assault carbine at him. Whoa. What's with the heavy artillery? Naruto questioned while raising his hands, and Jack grunted while firing at Blackfire, the girl protecting her head with her arms as the bullets bounced off her armor. That chick is wearing some kind of flexible body armor, when we tried stun weaponry they didn't even ding her. Jack said simply with an annoyed look, and Naruto nodded his head slowly. Geez old guy, where'd you get that thing? Naruto questioned while Jack then turned back to shooting at Blackfire, drawing her attention to them. Seeing her power up a dark gold Naruto quickly rolled out of the way, while bringing Jack with him. What the hell are you doing? Her armor is too tough for your damn bullets to pierce. Naruto shouted and Jack rolled his eyes. Actually I was drawing her attention to us so the others can get the injured out of here. Jack said simply and Naruto then noted the numerous cops dragging wounded officers and civilians out of the area, while Blackfire was now rushing towards them. You wouldn't happen to have a missile handy would you Naruto questioned and Jack grunted before firing a grenade from his M4, the grenade detonating before Blackfire and sending her flying back. No, my Singer missile launcher is currently in my car. Jack said and Naruto blinked, then looked at him strangely, before ducking when Blackfire tossed a car at them. Both ducked down as the car then slammed through a building behind them before exploding, and Jack sighed. And that was my car. Jack grunted out while Naruto then watched as Blackfire stalked towards them once more. Someone is seriously PMSing this is almost as bad as the time Jinx got pissed off at me for being late to visit her. Jack mused and Naruto blinked. Almost. He asked incredulously of the man who nodded then rolled behind another car, Naruto following, as Blackfire blew the car they had been behind away with her supercharged eye beams. When Jill Manx is pumsing, things blow up, when she's in a really bad mood, she starts bringing buildings down on top of you, and on her birthday, weird shit happens yet somehow through all of that I survived by hiding under a cardboard box. Jack said then muse while Naruto made a mental note not to seriously piss off Jinx anytime soon. However both then rolled back as Blackfire slammed her fist into the ground where they had been, breaking the road up under them, and knocking Jack onto his ass. Something is seriously wrong with her. Naruto said mostly to himself then flipped forward with a kick, knocking Blackfire back into a car. Hey old guy. Get out of here, while I deal with the pissed off princess. Naruto called over his shoulder and Jack grunted, while getting to his feet. My name isn't old guy. It's Jack, and if you don't like, that then just call me, Snake. Jack called out then rolled behind a car, and stealthily made his way out of the area while Naruto smirked. Finally, a snake I don't hate. Naruto quipped to himself then turned his eyes to Blackfire as she pulled herself out of the car. Come on. Naruto said while crouching back into his stance, and the furious Blackfire rushed forward with a roar. Dodging her first right hook Naruto slammed his elbow into her gut, only for her to spin in midair, and nail him in the head, sending him flying into and through the front of a building. Ouch, that hurt more than last time. Naruto mused, then got up in time for Blackfire to ram into him, then fly through several walls, and then the ceilings of the building, until they came up onto the roof. She then threw him off of herself and landed on the ground, her arms hanging low, hair frazzled and seeming to make spikes at the ends, and her lips twisted into an enraged snow. 
Seeing all this Naruto narrowed his eyes and then stood up while Blackfire rushed at him, only for the teen to quickly throw her over and into the next building. Something's wrong with her this isn't like the last time I fought with her, she's angrier, and her powers are stronger somehow. Naruto said mostly to himself, while a roaring Blackfire flew out of the building he tossed her into then lunged down at him, and plowed him through the building once more, and into the street in front of it. I don't know if this town can take much more of this. Naruto muttered then kicked Blackfire off of himself before flipping back to his face, inwardly marveling at the fact he hadn't been knocked out by that last attack. Narrowing his eyes as a growling and snarling Blackfire got back up Naruto released the scallops and the electrode knuckles on his gauntlets, the X on his greaves sparking as well. Alright Blackfire, let's see if I can't knock you out myself. Naruto said while Blackfire rushed towards him with the punch he blocked with his gauntlet, grimacing only slightly when he feels the force behind the attack then slams his electrified fist into the girl's gut. Blackfire grimaced in pain at this, and was sent flying back, while sparks arched over her body. X was somewhat surprised when the girl sparked red for a second then got back up and growled towards him, the jewel on her collar armor glowing. Alright, something screwed up is going on here. Naruto said mostly to himself while Blackfire lunged forward with a roar, punching and kicking at him wildly, while he blocked and evaded the strikes. Kicking the girl in the head with an electrified drowned house, sent Blackfire to the side, only for her to get up once more and growl once more. This is something like what the others said I act like in my Kyuubi state. Angry, relentless, and driven to destroy, what the hell has happened to you Blackfire? Naruto wondered to himself, while Blackfire then flew towards him, and he flipped up, only to spin into a roundhouse punch to her spine that sent her straight into the ground. The girl growled yet again however and got back to her feet, much to the blonde's annoyance and confusion, as she then lunged at him with the roundhouse, but he ducked under it, then slammed his fist into her jaw, sending her flying back. It's like her body is on autopilot or something, everything she's doing is getting more and more violent as she goes. Naruto thought then frowned when Blackfire got up again, then grabbed a car and then spun, throwing the vehicle at Naruto who crouched. 1000 Blades Jutsu. Naruto called out as hundreds of blades of wind surrounded him, ripping the car apart, while Blackfire growled angrily. The girl then charged her eye beams with a manic grin, and Naruto cursed before throwing his arms up to block the beam that hit him, and plowed him through two buildings before he stopped. That chick is on power steroids. Naruto muttered while getting back to his feet, and noting Kyuubi's chakra suddenly seeped into his half-melted gauntlets, repairing them easily before vanishing. I have got to figure out how Kyuubi's doing that. Naruto said to himself then jumped out of the rubble of the wall he'd been plowed through, and ran back to where Blackfire had been. Looking around he frowned then turned on his inferred vision setting, and saw a brightly glowing form flying overhead. Turning his inferred off Naruto then teleported above Blackfire and fell down on her, plowing her down into the ground with an enormous crash, while Naruto flipped out of the dust, none the worse for wear. Turning around however he was surprised when yet again Blackfire started to get up, only he instantly noticed the jewel on her collar was sparking as if damaged. Something about that gem must be causing her to go berserk. Naruto thought while also noting the clothes that Blackfire wore over her armor were now thoroughly torn to shreds. The girl didn't seem to care as she then lunged at Naruto with a roar, throwing dark bolts at the blonde wildly. Naruto breathed out as he blocked each of the dark bolts with his gauntlets, effortlessly knocking them out of the way before taking a stance and looking at Blackfire. Not allowing her time to try another attack Naruto lunged forward, and then quickly dropped into a sweet kick Blackfire jumped over only for Naruto, to place his hands onto the ground, and kick up into her gut, sending her flying high up into the air, while Naruto flipped onto his feet. The alien princess managed to right herself in the air, but Naruto appeared and slammed his fists down into her head, sending her flying down into the ground. Landing Naruto watched as Blackfire got up again, bleeding, panting, and looked more than worse for wear, and yet she was still getting up for more. I've got to put an end to this, before I kill her. He said to himself before lunging forward, swinging his arms, Blackfire blocked the scallops with her armor, only for the sharp weapons to dig into her armor. Naruto then slammed his head into hers, disorientating the girl, and he quickly kicked a gem on her collar, sending her flying back. Naruto then teleported behind her and caught her, quickly ripping the gem off her collar he watched her eyes dim. Soon her normal violet returned, and she looked up at him, and gave a weak smile. Thank you. She managed before passing out, and Naruto quickly used some healing jutsu on the girl, then picked her up and placed her over one shoulder, before looking all around and narrowed his eyes. Someone is pulling strings, and I hate it when people pull strings. He said then looked at the gem he pulled off of Blackfire's armor before putting that into his belt. He then noticed something in her ears and pulled those out as well, showing miniature headphones with a jagged black S on the front of each of them. Ravager. The blonde boy growled out before vanishing with his exsuit's teleportation function. Ravager smirked as she added the fight between Blackfire onto the screen, playing on screen was Naruto's fights with Sasuke, the Kanohanin, the Titans, his days in the hive as Tempest, and his earlier fight with Blackfire. Beside this screen however a computer compiles the techniques and abilities that the ex-shinobi has used thus far. The list thus far has. 
Rasengan, Adama Rasengan, Chidori no Rasengan, Kage Bunshin, Bunshin Bakuha, 1000 Blades Jutsu, Futin. Makukaten, a strange sealing ability, wind element manipulation, natural healing abilities, skilled swordsman tactician, expert use of kunai shuriken, and master of various shadow claw fighting styles. His powers are all quite impressive. Ravager mused while Wintergreen nodded his head from her side. Did you expect anything less from him madam? He has interested you for weeks on end after all. And this is possibly only the tip of the iceberg as it were. Wintergreen commented, and Ravager nodded her head with a grin on her face, as she watched Naruto as he faced, and then dispatched his various opponents on screen. Yes. He is very intriguing indeed Wintergreen, but I feel more of an evaluation of his skills is needed before I make my first move against him. Ravager mused and Wintergreen nodded his head with a hum while the girl then still the screens of Naruto in his various costumes and gear. Quite the odd one let's see how you fare against someone who can read the future. Ravager quipped mostly to herself darkly while the screens cut off. Hive HQ. Naruto landed in sight and quickly rushed to the infirmary, placing Blackfire down on a medical bed as soon as he arrived. He then did a cursory evaluation of the girl's health, and found besides a possible concussion, severe bruising, and the damage done to her armor, that the black-haired alien would be just fine. Sighing in relief Naruto then reached up and pressed down on the buttons at his ears, the skull part lifting up as he then rubbed his eyes. Holy shit. Gizmo called out while looking at Blackfire and Naruto rolled his eyes in slight annoyance. What happened to her tempest? Gizmo demanded and Naruto crossed his arms. We had a little tussle. He said and Gizmo gave him a look. She looks like she was dragged behind a train for a week. He shouted and Naruto pinched the bridge of his nose before tossing the weird gem that had been on Blackfire's collar to the diminutive genius. That thing had some kind of mind-altering effect on her, while she had it on she was going berserk through downtown. I stopped her from destroying everything and brought her here because she obviously wasn't in the right of mind. Naruto explained and Gizmo frowned while looking over the gem. I'll be able to tell you what this sucker did by tomorrow, temp. Gizmo said and Naruto nodded before cupping his chin. When she wakes up, I want you to try and fix up Blackfire's armor as well, Giz. Also tell the others she's my guest until she makes a full recovery as for me, I'm heading to my room to relax a bit. With that at a shake of his head Naruto walked out of the room with Gizmo nodding absently as he walked down the halls, to find the others and Naruto then turned down the hall to his room. Walking in sight he was surprised to find Jinx still there, and still reading the book he wrote with white eyes. Whoa is it even possible? The girl wondered and Naruto chuckled lightly. The girl yelled hearing him and blushed as she quickly closed the book, and gave him a sheepish expression. Tempest. You're back so soon. She asked and Naruto at 2 o'clock and frowned at the girl. It's been 3 hours. He stated flatly, and Jinx blinked, before chuckling nervously, while rubbing the back of her head. And yes, the things in that book are possible, at least according to Irosen and they are. Naruto said then mused and Jinx snickered, figuring he meant his perverted sensei. The girl then got up off of Naruto's bed and smoothed out her skirt before walking towards the exit. Jinx. He said and the girl stopped giving him an innocent look. Book. He stated holding out his hand, and the pink-haired girl nervously handed the book she had held behind her back to him. It's actually not that bad it does have some smut in it, but not half as much as I originally expected. Jinx offered and Naruto rolled his eyes before taking the book and tossing it onto his bed. So what happened while you were out? Jinx questioned and Naruto groaned lightly. I had a run-in with a girl named Blackfire, she was under some weird mind control or something, as far as I can tell looks like this one freaky looking jewel on her armor was causing it. I'd appreciate it, if you would head over to the infirmary, and see if I missed anything, I did a preliminary checkup, but I didn't think it would be ethical for me to check for anything else. Naruto explained while detaching his shoulder armor and sheath, allowing them to fall to the floor. Oh, okay Tempest. But, I was kind of wondering. Jinx said then started and Naruto looked at her while taking his gauntlets off. When do you think we're going to be meeting with your girlfriend? She asked with a forced smile, and Naruto blinked before chuckling and rubbing the back of his neck. Whenever she feels comfortable meeting with you guys I guess. Naruto said and Jinx blinked several times. You actually told her you're from the hive, she asked incredulously and Naruto nodded his head. Why? She demanded and Naruto rolled his eyes to his only real female friend besides his girlfriend. Because I don't like keeping secrets from her. If we're going to have any kind of a relationship we actually have to talk about who we are Jinx. Naruto stated flatly, and Jinx opened her mouth to say something, then closed it and finally sighed. Alright temp, I'll go check on this, Blackfire chick for you, anything I should know beforehand. Jinx said then questioned and Naruto cupped his chin in thought. She's Tamaranian, but she has an extremely weak immune system, according to something she said when we last fraud. Naruto offered and Jinx raised a brow before nodding her head and walking out of the room. Once the door was closed behind her and she had made it out of earshot of Naruto's room, the girl twitched. Why are all the cute and nice guys all completely clueless? She wondered aloud while stomping down the halls to the infirmary, while grumbling about the blonde-haired boy under her breath. 
When I do meet this mysterious girlfriend of his I'm going to talk to her right. Jinx then sat with an evil grin and pink energy spiraling around her left hand. Downtown. Jack groaned while he walked with several other officers, helping wounded get into ambulances. Just another ordinary day in Jump City. He thought to himself, before rubbing his eyes, and then calling out to an officer, and having him head into and check out a building. What happened? The voice called out as Robin the boy Wonder rushed over to him, and Jack grunted under his breath. Orange chick with black hair and powers like Starfire mean anything to you? Jack questioned and Robin frowned to himself. Blackfire. He said and Jack rolled his shoulders, producing several pops while the other titans made it. Whoa dude, someone went berserk on downtown. Beast boy said while looking around and Jack reached into his pocket and pulled out his smokes. Literally, the guy who stopped her seemed to say she wasn't acting right. And personally the red eyes and non-stop growling also kind of tipped me off to that. Jack offered while lighting his sick and saw Starfire look around with worry. Guy who stopped her managed to rip this gem thing off her armor, and she just kind of stopped. Well after he beat the unholy hell out of her at least. She kind of passed out after that. Jack then offered and Starfire seemed even more worried, while Robin frowned. Who was it that Naruto got to watch town for us? He wondered then was about to ask when Jack grunted and rushed over to a slab of rock and lifted it up, finding his M4 carbine he pulled it out and then checked on the gun. Ah, uh, do you have a permit for that? Cyber questioned and Jack rolled his eyes before fishing something out of his pocket. Yeah, I also have a permit to live considering that the bulk of your enemies throw cops like me around like crack dolls. Jack offered while showing the permit and Cyber checked it only to gawk. Will you have a missile launcher? He asked and Jack shrugged his shoulders. Some of us have to take Cinderblock down the hard way. He offered and Robin pinched the bridge of his nose. Who was it that came down here and stopped Blackfire? He asked and Jack shrugged his shoulders. To hell if I know, it was that freaky skull masked ninja from the station a month back. I swear, I got out of the military, to get away from this ninja shit. Jack grunted while his weird mannerism suddenly made some sense. X. Robin questioned and Jack shrugged his shoulders. I guess that's him, he did have a big red X on his mask and chest. Jack offered while taking a drag from his cigarette and Robin frowned. How does Naruto know X? He wondered to himself, and Raven decided to add her own, fake, idea to the mix, so that the boy wonder wouldn't get ideas. She had pretty much guessed Naruto and Red X were the same person, an educated guess, but still a guess. However, she didn't feel the need to try and track him down when he had nothing they could hold him for, and would get them all into trouble more than anything. Maybe he's a mercenary. She offered and Robin looked to her with a raised brow. As far as we know, X has kept a low profile on us, since he fought with that Sasuke guy. From what we can gather he went there to get Jinx out, maybe the Hive kids hired him to bust her out. This time, he's appeared after I asked Naruto to find someone to watch over the city. Meaning more than likely, X is a kind of mercenary for hire by whoever can pay him the most. It would also go with his, I only look out for number one, motto, as he'd only be working for himself for the most part, for money. Raven offered and Robin cupped his chin in thought while frowning slightly, though the idea did have merit. Maybe, either way we have work to do. Titans, spread out and help whoever you can. Robin ordered and the group of teens moved out on the leader's orders, while Jack merely rolled his eyes. Maybe I should mention he's friends with Jill, er Jinx, nah. Jack considered then scoffed at the idea as he walked off to help with the cleanup with his hands placed into his pockets. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed. If you want a next part of this video, like subscribe and comment down below and turn on that bell notification and also check out the other videos that I have created and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.